All right, coach, we're ready for you. Uh, appreciate you taking the time today. Uh, we'll start things out with uh, just some some comments from you, and then uh, we'll, we'll uh, open it up for some questions, and we'll go from there. Okay. Adam, we're happy to be playing football this fall. I think every football player in the country is, but we're happy to be here and happy to be playing football. Um, a, a, a fall unlike any other because <clears> – <throat> Normally, there are a lot of question marks with teams and with your own team, but we just finished up a spring season three, three and a half months ago, and now we're going to tee it up and do it again. Um, our only loss from the spring season is our punter, and we're going to miss Sean Bliss around here, but if you get the opportunity to only lose one player from your roster, the punter's the one you want to lose. Um, but but on offense, we return, we return Robert Horsey and Leonard Scott at the defensive tackle position. Uh, we return four defensive ends that we really like in Trevor Booker and Carl Igwe and Zach Strand and Luke Freeman. At, at linebacker, we return Jake Brochard, Dylan Culpin, Mike Morgan, Trevor Craig. And then we've got Hans White back with us after a year off at the safety position. We return our two starters, Avery Thurman and Zach Willett. At cornerback, we return Stacey Watts and Akayan Loney. And then in the special teams department, we return Dane Kuntz who we think is a weapon for us, and we're happy to have him back. On offense, we return our five offensive linemen, but Andrew Griffith, Gottlieb, Adizi, Brandon Dillard, Greg Gaines, and Michael Hudron all return. We return our quarterback from the spring in Graham Walker. We return five wide receivers that we think are good players, and Kyle Belak, Lincoln Akubu, Malik Morse, um, Christian Thornton, and Aaron Curtis. At tight end, we return uh, – Chandler Breeden, Bryant Evans, and Will Hall at the fullback position. And we return Nate Forte and Amari Davis. And then at the tailback position, we return Malcolm Facey and Josh Maxwell from the spring. And then Gavin Lavitt is back with us after taking last spring off. Um, Adam, just excited to be here. Excited to be doing media day again. Excited to be practicing football. Excited to be at camp. I remember the last time we got to, to do this and it was actually in person. And I remember, um, you know, you taking a look at the poll and kind of, you know, a little, a, a little, I don't, I don't know. You, you had a reaction, I guess I'll put it that way. Now, you know, 18 months later or however long it is, two years, um, you're picked third. What is your reaction to that? Um, and, and really to say, uh, you know, to maybe jump a little bit ahead, that, that's, a, that's a lot of respect from being picked ninth a couple of years ago to, to being picked third. Adam, our worst finish in a conference the last six years is second. We just got picked third. Uh, you, you, you know, yeah, we're, we're, we are happy to be playing football, um, excited to be in the Mountain East Conference. Um, we, we appreciate the respect. Um, I honor, honored to be picked third in a very good Division II conference. Uh, we're going to go out this fall and give it the best we've got and just let the cards fall where they may. Tell us a little bit about um, the transition from, you know, from three to two, and you've been through it now for a couple of years. Where are you in that recruiting cycle? What has it, uh, what has it been like? And, and maybe talk about the, the, the conference brand as you go out and try to, try to get players to, to come and play at Frostburg. Yeah, people on the East Coast and people in the Mid-Atlantic region, they recognize the Mountain East Conference and, and they respect what's going on in the Mountain East Conference. And we get the attention of a lot of recruits uh, when we're going out and recruiting. Um, so that hadn't been a problem. And actually, it's been a blessing. Um, on the transition, um, I, we, we've never transitioned. So, so we just continue to play the brand of Frostburg football that we played in NCAA Division Three, and it works in Division II. Um, if, if my calculations are right, we're 11 and four in, in a year and a half of Division Two. So we haven't really missed a beat there. Um, our style of football, Adam, which is play really, really hard for three hours on Thursday night or Saturday, whenever we're scheduled to play, it's going to work at whatever level we're at and whatever game we're playing. Um, on the recruiting. We offered scholarships to the 2019 class for the first time in school history. Um, I, I laugh because we've got a bottleneck at the senior. We've got about 40 seniors at them. And then we've got about 90 freshmen all at the <laughs> same time. And, and we're facing the same challenges that all the other schools are facing. Um, those 2019 young men that played and played well that year, which there were eight of them freshmen. Well, two years later, they're just sophomores. Um, so the, the COVID year last year actually gave them their red shirt 
that, that they need it. Um, and, and then, Adam, here's the, the, the quandary that we're all in now, is we redshirted 28 players in 2019, and then the NCAA gave them a year back in 2020. So now they're 20-year-old freshmen with four years to play, and they have an opportunity to actually get their undergraduate degree and get their master's degree while playing football at Frostburg. It's not, there's probably not a lot of programs that can say uh, they have 40 seniors. Um, <laughs> how, how has that gone from a, a leadership uh, standpoint? I would think that that's got to be, even though you got a, a lot of a lot of players, that that's got to be a, a benefit to you. Yeah. Adam, this is this is a good university, and I know you've been here once or twice. And, and us us being an hour and forty minutes from Pittsburgh, and and two hours from DC, and two hours from Baltimore, and us being able to get to the beach in under four hours, um, that makes it a place that people want to be at. Obviously, most of the players that come visit here and sign with us, they like the mountains and they like the scenery around here. But with us running around five thousand students and, and having fifty majors and and twelve graduate programs now. Um, the university is building a new building every year, and we, we just finished a state-of-the-art dorm last year, and now we're building a state-of-the-art health science building. Um, the kids come and stay. Um, so, so we've went, and I'll get this a little bit wrong, we've went over the last four years, um, 15, uh, 17 seniors, 19 seniors. One year we had 26 seniors, and then with the 2020 seniors and now the 2021 seniors combined, we have almost 40 seniors in the football program. But now, hey, flipping that and looking at it the other way, Adam, I think I'm talking to you with 90 freshmen. So we, we have we have 90 players on our team right now with four years of eligibility. If I can keep them all together, we'll be national title ready here. And what, what would that be, 2025? <laughs> uh, everybody well, heard it here first. <laughs> if I if I, if I can get if I can get them all to buy in and, and believe in team and team football and you know we is bigger than me, uh, we'll we'll have a squad in 2025. But we've got the the red shirt kids from 2019 have four to play, and last year's class has four to play, and this year's class has four to play. Uh, we can just tell here from from talking to you for a little bit. Every time you you lace them up, you want to go win. But what was your approach to that spring season? It's got to be you know you want to you want to play those games, you want to win those games. Developmentally, developmentally though, how was that different than a normal uh, spring session? Yeah, la la last year's spring team, and we, we had a couple of couple of role players graduated and moved on. I told you our punter graduated and moved on. La la last year's team. Um, Adam, I believe they'll always have my heart um, but because of the weather here and the way things are here in February. And we had three or four weeks of preseason and two of those weeks that didn't come above 15 degrees. And then for two of those weeks, it snowed every single night that we practiced. Um, our best night of practice before we played a spring game was 35 degrees, which around here means after the wind chill, it feels about 20. Um, so, so going out and play the, hey, the mental and physical toughness that was acquired by the young men in our football program last spring would be second to none. Um, but I told y'all in the spring how, how how proud I was of them. I'm still that proud of them. Now, really, really happy to have them all back. And they're really happy to practice in 85 degrees <laughs> instead of 15 degrees. So, so that is all good. Um, but but here, here's what it did. It, it gave us four weeks of practice, preseason practice, so we could develop some of those young players. It let us play a bunch of those young players in the spring season. And then now they still have four years of eligibility. And then it gave us four weeks for them to have game experience and just to get to experience everything because we had home and away games. And you had close games as well. I mean, that, that had to be a very valuable experience for, for that team to go through as well. And we're, we, 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 we are well aware that we were two or three plays away from playing for the conference title. All right, coach, I think that'll, that'll just about do it for us here. Appreciate you uh, spending some time with us. Uh, best of luck to you here in, uh, in a few weeks. Adam, I appreciate you having me. Pound, cats, pounds.